Hey guys, this video is going to be about installing and programming a DCC decoder into um, a DCC ready locomotive using <coughs> the Digitrax Zephyr, uh, the first one, the DCS50. So first off, you're going to need to get yourself a decoder. And one that I recommend is any type, except for the AT version, um, of the Digitrax DH123 like that. Um, they make a DH123D, a DH123PS, um, they make a DH163, but uh, any one of these 9-pin Digitrax decoders, the 123D or the 123PS, they're probably the best ones just because they're simple and they're pretty cheap too. And if you're not looking to do sound, you're just looking for a basic um, Digitrax, well not even Digitrax, just a basic um, DCC operation, this is going to be the ideal thing you want. So the first thing you're going to notice on the decoder is if you get the PS version, which um, I guess, yeah, it'll have this adapter thing with it. One of the, I forget which one it is, there's one that comes with a short one and one that comes with one about this long, the little wires here. But anyway, and then you have this end, which has nine little pins in there, and it clamps into this just like that. And then you have your decoder. <coughs> Next, um, there's two types of trains I have here. The first off is the Atherns with their DCC quick plug equipped. And um, contrary to most advertisements like that that claim stuff is easy it actually is pretty easy with um, this system so I'll show you here what you gotta do let's take it out of the box here and on these quick plug locomotives the train has you usually can take the will have to take the shell off although on the SD40-2 and SD40T-2 models um, it's pretty easy to find and if you lift this up in here you will find what usually will be a little gray box although I already have a decoder in this I forgot about that but quite simply there'll be a, a little um, gray box in here it has a microchip on it and once you pull that off, it'll reveal this wire. And if you look closely, there's nine pins there, just like the nine pins that were on here. So what you do is you take the decoder, you line it up with the right pins, and you clip it in. And hopefully, if you do it correctly, it'll go in, and then you'll be ready to start programming it. and then put your wires back on. And then you can go ahead and put your train back together. Now when I took this off I dropped it and the little top thing here with the fans managed to fall out so I get to put this back together. Well, also in this video, I guess you'll learn how to put the grills and fans back together of an Atherton SD40 T-2. Uh, there's one, and now we'll put the other one in. One second, there's a little pin on the side and a slot for it to go. There we go. Ah. Do it later. And then basically, just push the thing back on. <coughs> <coughs> now I should be able to get this in. Oh, 
I'll glue those in later. And as long as you don't drop anything when putting the decoder in, um, you shouldn't have any trouble at all putting the decoder in the locomotive. And as long as you're using the same decoder type, it doesn't matter how it plugs in. What I mean by that is whether or not you plug it in using these pins, which I'll get to, or you use the 9-pin uh, socket like that. As long as you're using the same type of decoder, the programming process is the same. Let's put that all back together in there. And let's see, the next type of locomotive I've got here is one that is not the Athern Quick Plug equipped, but it does have a somewhat quick plug in it. And what you'll see here is on the main circuit board, you have your blank your dummy plug, your dummy decoder, that blocks off the circuit to the DCC so it, it lets it work in DC um, without short circuiting but then it makes it easy to put a decoder in. So as you see there there's the eight pins and the eight pins here and you just put it in like that and it doesn't really matter if it goes this way or that way um, You'll figure that out. You can always take it back out and put it in the other direction. <coughs> All that will do will make the run locomotive run forward or backward. Although I think there's a CV change you can do that will uh, reverse that anyway. <coughs> so, if you have a new Digitrax decoder, I think most decoders are like this. But um, at least I know for a fact that Digitrax are like this. If it's new, hasn't been tampered with or anything, it'll be locomotive address 3. So, I'll turn my track power on here. Go to locomotive 3 and make sure that works forward and that is forward and that's the front of the locomotive so I've got it in the right way too. So there's that. Now you're ready to program it. See it's on locomotive 3 but we want to get it to the 713. So what we're going to do <coughs> is come over here to the Digitrack Zephyr and on the back in the back here you've got a bunch of different things uh, those are labeled what like jump program rail ground um, obviously if you use the system you know that the rail goes to the main line and what I have here is a programming track it's a separate little piece of track it doesn't really connect to anything it's just a straight piece of track that's all it needs to be and you plug that into the programming section in the uh, back of the Digitrack system. And then what you do is you take your locomotive that needs to be programmed right here. Got the decoder on it. And you put it on your programming track, which you will have wired up already one wire to one side, one wire to the other, like so. Then you come back over here and turn your track power off. Um, select your locomotive there. I'm not sure it's really important that you do that. Actually it's not. You just you don't have to select any locomotive because you're using the programming track and you have the track power off. So it'll automatically do whatever locomotive is on the track. So make sure you have nothing else on the programming track while you do this, otherwise things are very likely to get messed up. So uh, what we do is to program it, we want to make it 713. So we go to program. It'll list all the different programming modes here. We want to find page mode, so there's page mode. And then we press the loco button, and since we want 713, that is um, not we press loco and it says 82 or 84 and since it's 713 we're going to use 84 because that's for four digit addresses so and 82 is for two digit addresses so we'll put in 84 and we'll type in 713 and then we'll press the CV right key and it will blink oh looks like I don't have this wired quite right 
I'll rewire this. And actually, that's good that happened. That'll just show you that's one of the errors you can get. Error, not error. So I'll check my wiring and make sure it's all good here. You need to make sure the track wiring is all um, solid, otherwise, you'll get that. DND, and I like to think of that as dead end. So there's a dead end in the wiring somewhere. Once you've redone the wiring, you're ready to try again. So make sure your decoder's in. Press uh, power on, power off. Make sure both your program. Oh, you know what? I think the problem we have here is program. A oh no, we're good. Those are both in. So. Try again here. So you go to program loco AD40713 CV right. It'll blink and then it'll go back to, uh, I don't know, and then it, it'll go to some number and press escape. And then you're ready to test it out. So take your locomotive, come back over to the main line, set it on the track. Turn your track power on, select the locomotive, which is 0713, and check the forward and back. <coughs> so we'll put it in forward here, and it runs forward, and it runs backwards. And for most people out there that aren't using sound, that's all they'll ever need to do, unless they're trying to speed match, but I don't really do that at all, because I run one locomotive on each track. and. Uh, Yep, that's it, and that's the Kato drive there for you. That is running very smooth. I like that. But um, that'll work if you use the Avon Quick Plug, um, which plugs into the end here with the socket. Um, it works the same way. So press the program to page mode, then press loco to. I use 84. Um, that works with two-digit addresses as well. But. Uh, I guess 82 would work. But then you can put your shell back on. In this case, it's my Kato FD70 Mac. So just clip it all back together. And so here we got 713. There's a train. Put it in back. See that? In reverse. Sure your lights are working there. You can test the zero function in there. Those are your lights. And there you have it. So that's how to program a locomotive on DCC using the Digitrack Zephyr on a programming track. So thank you for watching and look for more videos in the future.